to Fallsburg Elementary in our first ever Firecast. I am Sarah Bowen, Principal of Fallsburg Elementary. I'm Sabrina Fife, Secretary at Fallsburg Elementary, and I hope you enjoy our school as much as we do. Welcome to Fallsburg! Welcome to Fallsburg Elementary's Firecast. I am Mrs. Bowen, the Principal, and with me today, I have my guidance counselor, Mrs. Angel Ward, and my media spe specialist, Mr. Paul Chapman. Uh, we would first like to give you some information about Fallsburg Elementary. Mr. Chapman, can you tell us a little bit about Fallsburg Elementary and the dynamics? Fallsburg is a pre-K to eight school. We have approximately 300 students um, on average. We have great uh, community involvement here at our school. We are a community-based school, you know, almost um, 80 years old, built in 1930. So we have a lot of generational students that go here and parents and so forth. Um, you know, one of our big dynamics, I think, is we're able to have these kids from a four-year-old to an eight, eighth grade level. You know, we have them for 10 years. So we really know these students well. They get to know us well. Um, we're able to work with them on their strengths and weaknesses because we know those for all those years. So it's, it's a really dynamic uh, way to teach because you get to see these kids grow from, what, from a four-year-old all the way up to an eighth grade year. What are some of the activities that we have here for Fallsburg that we are able to offer for our kids? We offer um, basketball, boys and girls basketball teams. We have cheerleading uh, for the girls. We have uh, elementary and middle academic teams, and also something very special that has been around for many years at Fallsburg is our eighth grade annual trip. Um, the students uh, fundraise for that for all uh, proceeds. We have a lot of parents who volunteer their time and efforts uh, just to make sure these students get a well-deserved uh, eighth grade trip. Yes, and last year they went to Virginia Beach, right? Mm -hmm. yes. We've gone to Washington, we've gone to Virginia Beach, uh, we've done a lot of different trips with the students. And they learn a lot, and throughout the year they're also learning about uh, economics, raising money, uh, responsibilities that they have during those trips and so forth. Uh, Ms. Ward, uh, at Fallsburg Elementary we try to take every opportunity to celebrate student success and staff success. What are some things that we do here uh, that sets us apart from other places? Um, we have started this year with recognizing daily birthdays. Uh, some of our students here may not even know when their birthday is, so we like to make sure that everyone is aware of that. Uh, for behavior, which ties in with our PBIS, we offer the K-3 through Dragon Headquarters and as you'll see in the video, there is a, a recognition table set up for the students during lunchtime. Also for our fourth through eighth grade students, we do the Dragon Student Leaders, which allows um, students to be a leader and provide services to the teacher of their choice, whether it be reading with a student, whether it be helping that teacher uh, with organizational things, just a variety of things, whatever that teacher may need. And the student, the student leader is allowed to choose what teacher they work with. Uh, we also have our Brag and Dragon Wall, where teachers on a daily basis recognize um, the three R's with our students when they're being respectful, responsible, and ready. It's a great way to showcase those students and the great things that they are doing within our school. Is there, is there anything, anything else that you would like to add, Mr. Mr. Chapman? Well, one of the um, other activities that we use a lot too, which we talked about, was like our um, or Halloween or trick-or-treat the hallways. Yeah. And that's kind of a reward for the students also on their attendance because we have a special recognition for those students. And we turn the whole school into a, uh, I guess a uh, haunted house almost yeah. in a way. And then the kids are able to go through and, and trick-or-treat safely. Mm -hmm. And then the students that have done well and been to school get extra treats during that time. So that was a big one that we also yeah. do. Uh, also for our attendance, we do, um, monthly attendance winners where in the gym um, all the students who have perfect attendance for the month uh, their name is put into a cup and their whoever as name is drawn they can choose the prize and we also have recognition of our staff for attendance and they get to choose a prize as well uh, at the end of the year we have a bicycle giveaway 
uh, the bicycles are donated and the boy and girl uh, for the year that has had perfect attendance and we choose the name out of the cup and they will receive a bicycle. Um, some other ways that you know we check with attendance is um, I do a lot of phone calls home. Uh, the secretary is responsible for helping me with attendance as well and I do counseling with students for attendance and counseling with parents as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chapman, and thank you, Mrs. Ward, for participating in our first firecast here at Fallsburg Elementary. Welcome to Fallsburg Elementary's Firecast. I am Mrs. Bowen, the principal, and with me right now I have Miss Ashley Workman, middle school math and science teacher, and I have Mr. Craig McDavid, fourth and fifth grade science teacher here at Fallsburg Elementary. And right now I wanna just kinda of talk about your role. So Mr. McDavid, what are some of your roles here that you do at Fallsburg Elementary that are STEM related? Okay, well, um, I'm a fourth and fifth grade science teacher. Uh, and so my day is mainly focused on science. I have four one hour class periods with my students. Uh, and we focus on STEM scopes as our main curriculum. And then we supplement the curriculum with Project Lead the Way. Can you explain STEM scopes a little bit for uh, that don't, may, STEM don't Scopes know about it. has been a fantastic curriculum since we adopted it two years ago. Uh, it's based on the 5E model, so uh, every week, every day is a different E. And so Monday is Engage, and you start with uh, an activity to bring back their prior knowledge, and then you go into the hook immediately. And so it's two activities back to back to get them thinking. Uh, the second day is Explore, and so you do some type of project-based learning activity that takes a little more time. Uh, day three is explain, and so we have something called STEMScopedia, which is very similar to Wikipedia articles, but it's all about the content being learned currently. Um, there's videos to supplement that as well. On day four, we do elaborate, and that's when we get into cross-content connections. Um, and so we have differentiated levels of reading activities that are involved with the science standards, and then we have differentiated levels of mathematics activities that are also involved with the science standards. Um, we wrap up day four with a video that we all watch together. And on day five, we do the uh, evaluate portion. That's the fifth E. And my students do something called claim evidence and reasoning, which is like a, a scientific open response. Mm -hmm. And then we do uh, just a simple multiple choice test to wrap it up with. And that's great, especially for the new accountability yes, with science. Absolutely. So that is, that is awesome yeah, that we, our kids are going to be so prepared for absolutely. that. Absolutely. We started STEM very scopes before we saw the, yes. The, yes. the assessment. And actually when I saw the assessment, I was very relieved <laughs> because my students had a lot yes. of prior mm -hmm. knowledge of the CERs. I think that about covers okay. it, yeah. Ms. Workman, what about you? Uh, I teach 6th, 7th, and 8th grade science, um, and STEM Scopes is my main curriculum also, and I supplement with Project Lead the Way and Learning Blades. And we use the Chromebooks basically to, to do all of that. What, uh, can you explain a little bit what Learning Blades is? Learning Blades has all different kinds of scientific careers, and they explain what they do, how much they make, what all kind of education's involved in it, what the students might experience, and they can learn at their own pace. Mm -hmm. And that, that carries on through sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and, and then they work on their own, right? Yes. They can work at their own pace to see and explore different jobs that they right. may be interested in that are STEM related. And, and something else that is special, this year is the first year that Fallsburg ever had Lego Club. Yes. So can you explain that? Because you lead that. Can I you do. explain that and, uh, and the success that, that we had? It was really exciting. Uh, First Lego League was just a passion of mine. Um, I've been involved with it for a few years just through the college. Uh, they always host the big regional mm -hmm. event. And so I've, I've emceed for them. I've been a table judge as well. Uh, and I've been wanting to start one here at Fallsburg, and I finally found enough grants because it is a, it's an expensive club to start. Uh, but I finally found enough grants that we got our robot, we got our table, and we got the kit to start this year. And uh, the kids had a blast. We worked from August to December, and we went to the tournament, and we ranked ninth out of 18 teams. Awesome. Our first year ever. And so we That's were beating awesome. out teams that had come back multiple years. 
I'm super proud of my kids. Yes, I think uh, we'll have kids knocking down the door to get in that Absolutely. club next year. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's already full, and I've had kids on the wait list. I yes, have three so that's kids awesome. That is awesome. Um, Ms. Workman, our middle school is one-to-one. -one. We have Chromebooks and laptops for every student at our middle school. Can you tell me how that you utilize our middle school being one-to-one -one and how that's able or allowed kids to be more engaged in your classrooms? Oh my gosh, being one-to-one -one is awesome. Uh, it allows the kids to be able to interact with technology, which is something that they're going to have to interact with from here on out, mm -hmm. so they can become good at using it. Um, and especially, I use STEM scopes a lot with it so they can interact online mm -hmm. with the curriculum. And he was talking about the STEM scopedia, like a Wikipedia mm -hmm. article. And um, there's all different kinds of activities that the kids can do online, which, and they love. I love, especially, um, you also use your Chromebooks and laptops for math. Yes. Uh, can you explain how you use your Google? That way you are able to do your formative learning checks. I, I love that way you use it, so that way you can explain that to um, everyone. Basically, we just, I do my learning target checks or the formative assessment checks for each lesson um, through Google, and I just set up, it's kind of like a quiz, mm -hmm. and the students can go in and, like I said, do, work at their own pace, and then let's say they submit it, they can see what they've missed, so they can go back, and it's instant feedback for them. Great. Well, thank you both for participating in the first Firecast. I appreciate your time and answering all my hard questions. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Fallsburg Elementary's Firecast. I am Mrs. Bowen, principal here at Fallsburg Elementary. And right now with me, I have Mrs. Kayla Woolhoy. She teaches fourth grade language and reading. And I have Mrs. Sammons, April Sammons, that teaches second grade self-contained. So today with them, we're going to talk about student engagement. We have really been working on a lot of different instructional practices here at Fallsburg Elementary this year, and engagement is a big one that we have also been working on. So Ms. Woolhoy, kind of talk to me and tell me about some of the things that you do for student engagement in fourth grade. Okay, in fourth grade, I like to get the kids really involved in the classroom lesson, and I like to get them up and moving around. And one of the things I like to do is do um, some whole brain teaching strategies, like something that's called brainies, where during my grammar lessons, when they give me an answer, they have to use hand motions to punctuate their sentences. So if they're capitalizing a letter, they may have to go like this. If they're putting a period at the end, they may have to go, and I've seen that in action. <laughs> that just makes them more mindful so that when they go to write, then they've got that in their memory and it's, it's just a quick recall for them because they, then they've got the mind and they've got the hand motion and then it's going to show up on their paper. Yes. We also love whole brain teaching. Um, we use the call and response. An example of that would be um, like all set. You bet. Yeah, and um, hocus pocus, now let's focus. So it really gets them involved. Yes, and, and, and both of your classrooms are so busy with student engagement, and that's why I chose both of you. Um, you both also use Kagan, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. strategies with Kagan. Can you explain either uh, something that you use with Kagan for student engagement, either one? Um, I use the Kagan Manage Mats a lot. Um, when they're in their differentiated groups, you know, they're used to working with the same group of kids. Um, but the manage mats enable them to work with other students. You know, you might pair them up strategically is what the manage mats are for if they aren't mastering a basic second grade standard. Um, so we, we love the manage mats and I know she, you use them as well. I love them, especially for the we do and the we do together mm -hmm. because I have circle tables in my room so they're already grouped but that way I can mix the kids up when we're doing whole group instruction and get kids to interact with different kids. I also like to use something called talking clips where they have clothes pins at their table and they each get two. And you can only use two, but you have to use two. So that gets the kids that like to take over the conversation yes. to slow down. <laughs> and it gets the kids that maybe hang back and don't want to talk. It requires them to at least participate in the collaboration. And so I really like the Kagan strategies because it's encouraged me to get the kids to collaborate more with each other and not just listen to me talk up front. Right, and that's something that we focused a lot on also this year with the gradual release model, mm -hmm. is that collaborative setting and Kagan and these engagement activities really help with that. How do you feel that strong engagement has helped 
with your achievement score, Miss Woy, because we've been focusing a lot on, on raising our achievement here at Fallsburg, and we're doing an awesome job at that. But how, how has that helped? I know that by using more of the we do together, because I've always done the direct instruction and I've always done the modeling and then had them perform, but doing the we do together has helped them hear each other's ideas and listen. And I've seen that come across in their scores. Novice reduction in the fourth grade and inter intermediate as a whole has been wonderful and we just keep going. I have great expectations for the spring scores. Ms. Hammonds, what about you? How Achievement in your classroom, how do you feel like student engagement has increased your student achievement? Well, with our high expectations, they know, you know, that once we teach the, these routines and procedures um, with just, for example, um, collaborative, collaborative grouping, um, they know they're held accountable. Every student has a role. I have this group acronym, and in talking about um, Kagan, um, there's the acronym groups. It means a different thing, and it holds them all accountable. Can you like explain every, that? Yes. Um, the G stands for get along. The R, respect others. The O is on task, stay at your own group. The you use quiet voices. I have a noise level chart, so if they're working in their collaborative groups, um, the noise level there would be super team task. Um, when we move and transition to a learning check, it's um, silent mission. The P is participate, and there's a rule for that. They know that they have to go around the table, and you know everyone gives equal participation. And um, the S is stay in your group. Um, how yeah. has that improved? You know they're held accountable, they so they know that you know they're not off the hook. Well, it's, it's a team. It's all of us. And when a student is engaged and they are enjoying the actual lesson that makes them want to come back for more. It makes them hungry. Yeah. And so that, that's a big thing of engagement, I, I feel like, because when a student is engaged, they want to come the next day. What are we going to do tomorrow? You know, what are we going to do next week? It, it makes them hungry and it makes them want to come back for more. And you both do a great um, justice for engagement, bringing those students and keeping them engaged. So I appreciate you both coming and enjoying and participating in our first firecast. So frequently in my reading instruction and it really helps me provide my students with their learning intentions for the day and I had first heard about PACE from Judy Dotson who's an instructional supervisor for Carter County Schools and the impact that this has had in my classroom has just been tremendous um, I've seen so much more engagement with my students We've set up a Facebook page for our parents to be able to know what's going on daily in their students' life. So every single day dear, during the class, um, I'll do snapshots, I'll do video, and the students, um, I'll, I will post it on the Facebook page that's private just for the parents, and then they can see from day to day what their, their students doing every single day, if they have problems, if they have concerns, um, anything like that, so they can contact me instantly so it's kind of like the parent is still in the classroom with their kid. Learning Blades is just an online program that has uh, all different types of science careers and allows them to explore like what all those careers entail as far as um, how much that they make, um, what they are going to have to be involved with, kind of maybe the education that, that deals with that, things of that nature. We mainly use Chromebooks for a lot of this since our middle school is one to one and the kids absolutely love it um, and it allows them to work at their own pace. It's a lot easier to like find stuff like if you need to go to a page just search it and I mean if you like let's say that everybody if someone's struggling with reading it can read to you and stuff. It's, got, it's a lot more advanced which helps everybody to get to the right stuff at, at an appropriate time like. We're able to see the kids from when they're four-year-olds all the way to eight-year-olds. And like if you're a middle school teacher, you'll actually have the same kid math from sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, or social studies, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, or if you're intermediate, you'll have them in fourth and fifth grade. So you really get to know their strengths and weaknesses. So it's not like where you switch classes every year, you'll actually go into a class knowing right where you left off from last year, you know, where your kids were. So it's not relearning your kids, not having to relearn all the different rules and regulations, they already kind of know that going in. They know what's expected of them. 
So when you have a, a student for three straight years, and you're really able to, you know, a lot of things taught to them that, that they may not get if they're getting a different teacher every single year. Welcome back to Fallsburg Elementary's Firecast. I am Mrs. Bowen, and with me today, I have Mrs. Brenda Curry, our Family Resource Director, and Mrs. Teresa Prince, our Preschool Teacher. And these two ladies are both involved with our community involvement with our ACT grant through the KVEC Cooperative. So my first question to uh, Mrs. Prince, uh, Fallsburg is a very special school. What are some things that sets this school apart from others? We have a fantastic cleaning staff. Well, we, we, do. we do. Every school has we do. one, Every, and they're fantastic. But Trish, you yes. know, she knows what all's going on she in does. the school. She knows when. <laughs> she, does. she knows when I'm getting ready to do the art show. She knows when I'm. We're getting ready to do the spring musical, and she's always looking for these things like. Oh, oh, you can use this for the spring spring uh, musical. Uh, and if somebody's throwing something away, she knows who would really like to have that. And she's bringing it to you, you know. <laughs> and that's wonderful. That is. And that's just a little extra that yes. we have. Uh, our lunch staff. My goodness. Uh, and having to deal with preschool. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's only a certain amount of time for lunch. Right. But they, they have a way. They... Um, not only serve our kids with a smile, mm -hmm. they know every kid that walks through there. And if they don't, they're like, Miss Prince, well, who's this? Well, that's so-and-so, I know you're a mom, you know, things like that. Well, and that really comes all together, and that's what makes Fallsburg special, is because we are together to make one big family. Yes. And we, we have each other's backs, and we look out for each other, yes. and we look out for each other's children, and these our children's children, mm -hmm. and that is, that's a big component of what makes Fallsburg a really special place to be and, and work at. And we've had lots of talented children coming yes, from Fallsburg. Yes, we have, yes. L lots of children, uh, we had a, a little girl that was on the voice. It the voice. Kelsey May. Kelsey May. We've mm -hmm. got uh, students that are in bluegrass bands that are on the charts. I mean, we've got lots of students yeah. that came out uh, very talented in, in all aspects. Yeah. Very talented. Well, I'm, I'm going to talk about the laid back country picker. Well, yes. Because and we have a teacher that's <laughs> yeah. very with the, talented. With the, the, the feel good, you know, hit of the summer, you know, McGoffin County Cadillac. And our teachers here at school is in that video. Yes. I mean, you know, we're ready to jump in. We we, fo we foster the arts yes, here we do. at Fallsburg. We do. And, um, and actually a little bit more than I thought. When I had, you know, had to think about this, I was like, wow, hey. I know. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it is pretty cool. Uh, Miss Curry, uh, she, she touched base on a few programs, but we also have some very unique programs that you are in charge of. Uh, you're very involved with our students and our parents, and I'd like to ask you what are some of the things that you do specifically with the Family Resource Center and our school to make it the best place possible. Okay, so I, what I did is, of course, I jotted down a few things, and uh, as Teresa said, um, I think that when we actually start focusing on what we really do, it's really uh, just very uplifting to know that we are able to do these programs to be able to touch so many children in our community um, and parents in our community to bring that together. And as a coordinator for the last nine years, um, you know, our whole goal as a Frisky coordinator is to break the barriers for the students to maybe, you know, to meet those academic needs. Mm -hmm. uh, and through that, we were able to do some great programs like the Ready Fest. You know, that's the back to school program. And with that Ready Fest, we have our students, uh, our community partners, uh, we have average of around 26 community partners that will actually show up and bring school supplies for our kids. Uh, and we normally average about 250 students that comes through Ready Fest. Gr uh, grandparent celebration, awesome. which is very dear to my heart mm -hmm. um, because I find that when I'm working on the Frisky Grant and looking at statistics, uh, we have a lot of parents, uh, grandparents throughout our community that are raising their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So we want them to know that we appreciate them and we want them to be involved. They're special. And that's something that you both work on very, very, very well is you're always trying to take that extra step to make it better. No, no matter what we do, we always try to do better you know or how can we grow and so that's why you know I chose you two to be a part of that uh, the ACT grant and that community relations because you two do such a great job and go one step above trying to make sure that our community is involved and that our students are involved and showcase our school so 
I appreciate you both. Thank you for participating in our first Firecast. And I can't wait to hear all the great things that you both are going to be doing. so much for visiting Fallsburg Elementary today. We hope you have a great day.